I'm Amina, and I'm a visual artist. I teach Islamic art. I teach Islamic geometric patterns and arabesque art. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach an Islamic geometric pattern. So this pattern that we are going to learn is a fourfold pattern. All geometric patterns start off with a circle that's divided into equal parts. Depending on the number of equal parts that is divided into will determine the, uh, the type of geometric pattern. So a pattern that is a fourfold pattern, it will start off with a circle that's divided into four equal parts. And from there, you can get shapes such as uh, squares, eight-pointed stars, and 16-pointed stars. These are all multiples of four. When you start off with a circle and then divide into five equal parts, you will get a five-fold pattern. And from there, you'll get shapes such as pentagons, five-pointed stars, and 10-pointed stars. And next would be a six-fold pattern. You have a circle divided into six equal parts. And from there, you get shapes such as a hexagon, six-pointed star, and 12-pointed stars. This is the pattern that we are going to draw. It is a four-fold pattern. To draw this pattern, all we need is a compass and ruler. This is the compass that I will be using. I will refer to this part of the compass as the metal tip, and this part of the compass where the pencil is as the lead tip. The second thing we will need is a ruler. And lastly, a pencil. So you will start off with a clean sheet of paper, and we're gonna find the center of the paper. One way that you could do that is you can measure the sides of the paper, find the middle point over here and here, Place your ruler and then find the center of the page. Now once you found the center, you could draw a horizontal line all the way across. Mark your center and then you're going to use the metal tip of your compass and you're going to put it on the center and draw a circle. When using a compass, you want to use the top part of the compass so that you're not shifting the radius of the circle. You're going to draw a circle, just like that. Now, we're drawing a fourfold pattern, so we want to divide our circle into four equal parts. Right now, our circle is divided into two equal parts. So the next step will be where the circle intersects with the horizontal line. I'm going to mark these two points. And I'm going to take my compass and put the metal point where this horizontal line intersects with the circle. And I'm going to increase the radius on the compass so that it goes past the middle point. So it's somewhere in the middle of these two points. And I'm going to make two marks over here and here. Now without changing the radius of the compass, I'm going to put my metal tip on this point where the line intersects with the circle. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to mark here and here. Now what that does is, this will help us draw a line that goes through the circle vertically. And the way that we do that is, we're going to go through the X here and the X here, like this, and draw a line. You'll notice the line goes through the center of the circle. And now we have a circle that's divided into four equal parts. Now, the next part, the next thing I want to do is I want to draw a square. I want to draw a square that goes around the circle. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to take my compass and I'm going to put it back on this point here where the line intersects with the circle and I'm going to bring, back, bring down the radius back to the original size, like this. And I'm going to draw about 3 quarters of a circle like this. 
And I'm gonna do that on this point here as well. I'm gonna put my metal tip here. My lead tip is gonna be in the center of the circle. And I'm gonna draw about three quarters of a circle. I'm gonna do that again on these two points where the vertical line intersects with the circle. Put my metal tip here. And I'm gonna draw three quarters of a circle. And I'm gonna do that again here. Have my metal tip here, and my lead tip in the middle. Now, it creates these sort of petal shapes here, and we have four of them. If we connect the corners, we will get a square. I'm gonna use a red pen to connect the corners. You wanna take your time and be very precise so that you get a nice precise drawing in the end. Islamic art is all about taking your time and focusing and drawing and it's a really meditative process. So over here we have a square. Inside we have a circle divided into four equal parts. Now you notice that the pattern had an eight-pointed star. So we want to divide our circle into eight equal parts. So the way that we're going to do that is we're going to connect these two corners of the square and we're going to draw a diagonal line. Remember to be as precise as you can and take your time. Now our circle is divided into eight equal parts. To draw the eight-pointed star, we're gonna have to draw another square inside the circle using these four points. I'm gonna use a blue pen to draw the square. Actually, I'm going to use a pencil to draw the square. And we'll use the blue pen to draw the final pattern. You want to draw nice clean lines. I'm going to draw another square that overlaps this first square and that's going to give us our eight-pointed star and we're going to use these four points here. This is called a dynamic square. A dynamic square is a square that's on a 90 degree angle. And a static square is the first square that we drew. So these two overlapping squares create a eight-pointed star. I'm going to use my blue pen and I'm going to outline just the star. I'm not going to draw the full square.
So over here, I have the same drawing, but it's on a much smaller scale. And the reason why I have it on a much smaller scale is so that we can trace this pattern. We're gonna use some tracing paper. Now, if you don't have tracing paper, you can also use parchment paper. It works just the same. So you're gonna place your tracing paper on top. You're gonna take a piece of tape going to tape it down and you're going to use a soft pencil. A soft pencil is any pencil that has a B on it. So it could be a 2B pencil, a 4B pencil. If you don't have a soft pencil, that's fine. You just want to draw darker lines and we're going to outline just the star. Take your time and outline it with the ruler rather than doing it freehand. That will give you really clean and precise lines. So once I've outlined the star, I'm also going to outline the square. Although the square isn't part of our final pattern, it will help us tessellate the pattern. I'll show you how in just a moment. So once I have outlined the square and the star, I'm gonna remove my tracing paper. And I'm gonna line it again I'm going to match the corners of the square and I'm going to trace it again. So you see we have eight stars and in between you have these beautiful cross shapes. Now what we're going to do with this tracing paper is we're going to take a clean sheet of paper, we're going to tape it down nice and firmly and we're going to trace over it one more time. You want to make sure that the side that you drew on is facing the paper so that when we draw on it again the pressure from your pencil or pen is going to transfer the lead on the tracing paper to the paper. You want to use a ruler and applying some force, not too much, you don't want to rip the tracing paper, you're going to trace all of it again. And then once you're done, you want to just remove the tape from one side so that you could peek under to see if you have the whole pattern. If you see that you're missing some spots, you can tape it back down without moving it and finish. Once you're done, you can remove it. And since this hasn't filled up the entire paper, you can move it down, match the corners. That's why you want to draw in the square and trace again until you have the desired amount of space covered. You'll notice that when tracing, you can trace multiple lines at the same time, because when you align your ruler on one line, it aligns with many of the other lines. Now, you've transferred your pattern onto a clean sheet of paper without all those extra construction lines and the ink, so now, you have a fresh start here where you can paint your pattern any way that you like or color it in using color pencils or markers. My name is Amina and thank you for following this video. I hope you get a chance to draw this pattern and I hope you get to enjoy the process and really take a moment to relax and take your time drawing and reflect and just think about the way that these lines intersect and create these beautiful geometric shapes. And I hope you get a chance to paint it and color it in and make it your own work of art. Thank you.